We now acknowledge that for thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of our lives and spirituality. We are gathered on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Atawandaran people, and acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. We seek to live in respect, peace, and right relations as we live, work, and worship upon traditional territory. We are mindful of broken covenants and the need to strive to make right all our relations. And now we'll have a minute for mission. If no, we don't have a minute for mission. Pardon? It's on its way. And I hope you all have your elements for uh, communion, which will be later on. And um, if you don't, you need to receive them from someone, a greeter at the back. Karen. Karen has them in her little her basket her. over there. Emergencies drive. People need help right away. First with the basics. Shelter, food, clothing, and then with rebuilding. Increasingly, people from around the world are facing a variety of disasters. Climate change, health crises, food insecurity, and violent conflicts that forcibly displace thousands are just some of the catastrophes that affect millions of people every day. The United Church is part of a worldwide network that makes a difference in the lives of those more at risk. United Church partners in economical relationships in over 120 countries mean that we are on the ground ready to help in times of emergency. Recently, generous supporters have helped people struggling as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the devastating explosion in Beirut, and the earthquake in Haiti. From vaccines to hygiene kits to food to farm implements, your support is there when it's needed most. In return, our partners minister to us in a variety of ways, including spiritually. The United Church of Christ in the Philippines, a mission and service partner, shares this prayer with us. Let us pray together. Most gracious and merciful God, amidst the din of howling winds, above the noise of rampaging waves, atop the earthquake and the shaking of the earth, we hear your voice. Be still and know that I am God. Yes, even in times when we are prone not to be still, at moments when we are sorely tempted to resort to flight, we hear you and we pause to listen and to reflect. Stand still and recognize that indeed you are the God who is with us. That it is not in the wind or waves or in the earth's tremors that you speak, and that even when we walk through the shadow of the valley of death, that we are not alone. That even when we are put in the crucible of fiery furnace, that you are there to save. In times like these, you speak to reassure us through that still, small voice, through the concrete acts of solidarity of partners and friends, through those who lonely stretched out their helping hands, to those ravished by the storm, to those who are desolate and in despair, to those who are left with a threadbare hope. In times like these, you are assure us that we are not alone, that we have sisters and brothers who are moved to walk the Lonesome Valley with us. We thank you for in times like these, 
Your love and care are made more manifest and incarnate, made alive in concrete deeds of loving kindness and compassion. To you we return all glory and praise. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for dealing generously through mission service. Thank you, Matthew. That was most inspiring. I will we'll move on to the next uh, item in the bulletin, sharing of our joys and concerns. Being as it's October and I'm your greedy greeter, I get to share my joys every week, so I am lucky. If someone has a joy or concern to share with us, we'd love to hear now. Okay. Big joy. Yesterday we did, after a couple of weeks of serious heavy duty of um, reorganizing our yard and getting things done that we haven't done for 20 years, we hosted a reunion for Dan Cahoe's graduating class in 1970 from UWO Business School. So they weren't able to do it last year, and once again this year everything was sort of shut down and they said, well, they're losing members of the class. I said, we are going to do this, we want to do it. And I seem to have said, well, we have parties, we can do it at our place. And it, it turned out amazingly. And we had the help and support of a whole lot of people in the community. And we had a fabulous, beautiful, beautiful day. I couldn't have asked for a better fall day. So in fact, it really was a lovely reunion and it was, um, it was amazing how so many of us kind of pulled together. And, and I do admit, yes, we borrowed some chairs and things from the church, so we'll be bringing those right back. But we really appreciate it. I will all support the community. Anyone else? Thank you, co host. <laughs> well, I'm going to dare to move on to the uh, opening prayer as listed in the bulletin. Let us pray. O oh, Holy One, we gather in this sacred space. We pause in reverence of your presence amongst us this day. We long to feel your loving touch move within us, shaping our spirits toward your purpose as one community in Christ. Amen. And the gathering hymn is number 217 in Voices United, All Creatures of Our God and King.
I did call Paula, but I forgot to call Janet. I apologize. Now, that's my dyslexia showing through, and I do apologize. That's one of the things. You'll just have to have patience with me. I will mess up like that again, I'm sure. But please forgive me. <laughs> We're in the business of forgiving. That's what we're about, partly. <laughs> and our call to worship. Imagine a day when Christians all over the world set aside our differences and share what we have in common. A desire to know God and to follow Jesus as an example. Rejoice then, for today is that day. For whom and through whom all things exist, 
and bringing many children to glory, should make a pioneer of their salvation perfect through suffering. For the one who sanctifies is the one who sanctified all who have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. And our gospel reading is found in Mark, and we're reading from chapter 10, verses 2 through 16. Some of the Pharisees came, and to test them they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And he answered them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal to, and to divorce her. And Jesus said, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him about this matter, and he said to them, Whoever, marry, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke out sternly to them. But Jesus saw them and he was indignant and he said, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, and he laid on the hands on them, and he blessed them. And so ends this gospel reading. Let us pray. Loving Creator, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you. We ask now that the words that I speak, the meditations of my heart, will all be acceptable unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today is Worldwide Communion Sunday. This is kind of a big deal. All around the world, people are sharing in the Lord's Supper. Last year on Worldwide Communion, I served communion to KTV congregation outside on the driveway on the church parking, on the church driveway parking lot. It was the first time I was serving, um, serving communion, and I was very eager, but a little bit nervous. You see, I would waited a long time to receive my license preside over the sacraments. And no sooner had I received permission when the world went into lockdown. So outside on that parking lot, in the driveway, on that cold, crispy October morning, it was a big deal to me. Now I had asked beforehand that everybody bring their own elements. I figured that was the easiest way. I didn't know about these little cups that all of you were holding. So everybody brought their own elements, but I was prepared in case somebody forgot. Not well, I thought I was prepared. You see, I had thought that I could cut the little bread up into small little pieces and put them into muffin with papers. That way they wouldn't be touching them, they could grab the papers and everything would be lovely. Well, they were still sitting in front of me, and the couple of latecomers had come, so they hadn't had the paper, so there they are. And it was, like I said, a beautiful October crispy morning with a small, beautiful breeze. And when it came to that important part in the service where we're going to do communion, it didn't take long for that bread sitting in the muffin tins to start sliding across the table. And then the breeze picked them right up 
and then blew over across the fence and into the cemetery, into the graveyard. Talk about your communion of saints. <laughs> I tried to gather them up, and it wasn't just the bread that flew away, you see, it was the papers too, so I couldn't just leave them there. And I know sooner got them all gathered up, and I got back in my place, and I'm attempted to start back over again when the communion bread was once again carried away by that beautiful, soft, lovely morning breeze. That bread of life certainly seemed to have some life in it. And for myself, I couldn't decide if I wanted to cry, which I did, or did I want to say some of those words that ministers are not supposed to know about? Well, I've come to ministry late in my life, and trust me, I know those words. And I come to my mouth shut, and I'm trying not to cry. And I looked up at my congregation, and they're giggling, and they're trying not to show me their laughter. And I suppose in that moment, I did have a wake-up call that it all was kind of funny. But it did take me a few weeks to get there, and it probably has taken all this year to actually be able to laugh about it when I tell it. To understand that as the paper was flying across the cemetery, God was there. That as the muffin, pin, muffin, muffin papers holding that bread sailed off across the tombstones and the ministers chasing after him, trying to catch them, God was there. In the ordinary, in the everyday moments, God is there. And God is here. Holy moments, they happen. Well, they happen all the time. But we, we just miss them. In the busyness of living our lives, how many holy moments have we missed? When I studied the sacraments in school, we were taught how important it all is. That this is sacred and should be entered into with reverence. We are reminded of the night that Jesus and the disciples gathered in that upper room. They were participating in a ritual, remembering the liberation of Egypt from Egypt. The night of the Passover lamb and the unleavened bread. And it is all of that and so much more. We experience that which is beyond us. We need to understand that it's not the, it's not the water, it's not the grape juice, it's not the bread that is holy. It's God in the bread. Do you remember that miracle? When Jesus, he performed a lot of miracles, but the one in particular where he healed the blind man, and he took the mud, he picked up the mud, and he kind of mixed it up in his hand, he stirred it up in his hand, he spit and turned it, and he put it on the blind man's eyes, and he could see. It wasn't the mud that was holy, it was God. The finger of God in the mud. There is so much around us. At this table, we expect to find God. But we forget that God was with us as we ate our bread this morning toasted. The holy is in the ordinary. In those moments of life, when we are suddenly reminded that God is with us in that moment, Amount of 
We grew up hearing our parents talk about the Great Depression of the 30s. The world needed something. They were looking for something. Something that you could hang your hat on. They needed hope. Thank God for Shadyside Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh. Back in 1933, they kick-started the whole idea of what would become Worldwide Communion Sunday. It took to the 40s for it to really take off, but now it is celebrated on the first Sunday of October. It was meant as a way to unify denominations and people to celebrate the things that we have in common. It was an invitation to all people, regardless of their background, their culture, their traditions, to come together with their love for Jesus. So welcome to the table of diversity. And as almost 80, 90 years later, World Communion Sunday is more important than ever. We are still in the middle of global discord, and we are once again living through difficult times. We are again in a time of global pandemic, in a time of financial crisis, and people are once again looking for People are once again looking for hope. Is, is that a yes, but I believe that people are looking for more. For much more. I believe they're looking for God. And we need to reach out and to feel the presence of God standing beside us. Because God is close enough that when we reach out, we will understand. And we will feel that presence of God right next to us. We, we hear, we know, we know God. We have felt the love of our heavenly creator. We have found the joy and the peace of God's presence. We celebrate what Jesus did. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, what Jesus still does. We celebrate that Jesus took the time to bless everyone, including the little children. And it didn't matter who they were or who others thought they were. Jesus took the time to be with them, to bless them, to love them. Welcome to the table of diversity. We come to this communion table with reverence. We are entering holy ground. But holy ground is all around us. This is a holy time. This is a sacred space. God is here. We know this because God is love. And wherever true love is, God is present. God is here in the truth that we proclaim. In the light that comes through the windows, in the thunder that's rumbling in the distance, in the ordinary things, in the daily miracles that we take for granted, in the rising and the setting of the sun, the moon and the stars, the rhythm of the seasons, the breath that comes in and out of our lungs. God is here in Christ. God is the one who says, I am the bread of life. Holy communion is a declaration, or perhaps it's even more, a celebration of God's love. Augustine, he defined the sacraments as a visible sign of invisible grace. Our song of faith states the sacred in the midst of life. I love that. The sacred in the midst.
midst of life. We are standing on holy ground. We come together to celebrate God's love. And Lord's Supper is more than a remembrance and repentance. It is time to proclaim and celebrate that we are Christ's beloved. Praise God. Let us pray. <coughs> Gracious God, we come to you in prayer, aware that we are not alone, that you are with us, that your people, our family, are all around us. We come before you thankful that even when we do not believe in you, you believe in us and you find us worthwhile, so worthwhile that you offer yourself to us completely. Oh God, your love is a mystery. A mystery that we are deeply thankful for. Gracious God, we give thanks for all of those who have gone before us in faith. Those wise parents and teachers and pastors and friends who lived the faith in such a way as to make us want to follow you. Remembrance of them reminds us that we are here, not because of our own efforts, but because of the grace and the love that you gave us and to others. We are thankful, loving Creator, for the family that we have in you. We especially pray for that family, for the family to which we are born and the family to which we are now attached. We recall before you the challenges and difficulties that our community faces and ask you to guide and to assist us. Listen to the silent prayers of our hearts, loving God. We ask all these things in Jesus' name who taught us to pray together, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our communion hymn is Let Us Break Bread Together. We'll sing the first two verses now, and after communion we'll sing the second, the last verse, the third verse. Let us break bread together.
You are beyond complete knowledge, above perfect description. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, source of life, living word, and bond of love. You are creative and, create and creating, and self-giving, generous, generously moving, in all the near and distant corners of the universe. Nothing exists does the, that does not find its source in you. Even when we turn away from you, you are with us. Your presence never fails us. Your gifts of hope and new life transform us. We give you thanks, Jesus Christ, eternal as your love, our bond to one another. We rejoice with all your people of every time and place, with the angels and the archangels to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy are you. Holy, holy, blessed are you. It is Jesus, God incarnate, risen Christ, who joins us together as a community of broken but hopeful believers, loving what he loved, living what he taught, and striving to be his faithful servants in our time and place. In this meal, we remember Jesus, his promise, and the price he paid for who he was, what he said, and what he did. On the night before Jesus died, he took the loaf and gave thanks and broke it, saying, Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and poured it. saying, this is the new covenant, remember me. And we do remember. We remember the life of love, his friendship, his teachings, his dying, his rising from life again. And sharing this meal, we have lived out the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ will arise, and Christ will come to us again. Holy misery, God the Spirit. We call on you to transform these familiar things as you continually transform the world around us. Bless, bless this bread and this cup, the wheat and the grape, the farmer and the harvest, the seed and the sower so that in sharing these simple elements in community, we may taste and see your goodness, so that we might catch a glimpse of what it is to be in communion with you and with one another. Through Christ, in Christ, and with Christ, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. body of Christ, broken for you, the bread of life, the life of Christ, the cup of blessing, the gifts of God's people, thanks be to God. And I guess you'll have to remove your mask for this next part. The bread of life, take, eat.
We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into this world to live into the visions God laid on our hearts. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, forgive as we have been forgiven, and to love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. And let us join together as we sing, our, sing the final verse of Let Us Break Bread Together. Thank you. 